We're joined by the head women's basketball coach at Army West Point, Dave McGarity. Coach, thanks for giving us a couple of minutes today. It's great to see you, Zach. I hope all's well with you and your family. Same with you. And you guys were in a, a unique position. The season had ended two or three days before this all hit, and you guys are about to go into off-season program. So how have things kind of changed with what's going on in the world right now for your team? Well, like, like all the, the, the sports here at West Point, uh, you know, everything – has just been turned upside down. And, um, you know, we, we seem to have had more of a connection with all the coaches and certainly our athletic administration from, from Mike Buddy, the AD, uh, Chris Fowler, the senior women's administrator, right down the line have been absolutely incredible the way they've be able, been able to draw people together and make sure the connection is there uh, just by doing so many things. And, and obviously these, these type of interviews and the ability to do this with your team is, as I told you the other day, I, I started at 10 in the morning and I finished up around five in the afternoon having individual meetings with our kids. And, you know, I, I just felt really good that we had that connection with, with me and my, my, my staff. Well, you, you mentioned the, those meetings you had all day with, with your team and with your team being so young, primarily freshmen and sophomores, how critical is it for you guys to be able to continue to build those bonds and to find those ways during this time to continue to be able to build the team cohesion? Well, you know, it's interesting. A pretty, a pretty consistent theme in all of our individual conversations was how disappointed they were that they couldn't jump back into the postseason workouts and our individual, uh, you know, player development stuff that we do in the in the spring, you know, once they have time to re, you know, recharge the batteries, so to speak. And, you know, it's a long season, you know, we're starting in August and it goes to March and with such a young team, we had so many ups and downs. It was a real roller coaster, but I was just so uh, excited about the way we finished, you know, winning, winning those four, four out of our last six games and playing so well. I mean, you know, we knocked off the number two team in the league in Colgate on senior day that just really propelled us. We, even though we had a couple of tough losses, uh, you know, at the buzzer at Holy Cross in a close game at BU, we were able to win that first round playoff game at Loyola. So, you know, they were really pumped up and, um, you know, I think they're disappointed. So we got to figure out how to, you know, bottle that enthusiasm is when things get back to normal. You mentioned the roller coaster season you guys had a, a up and down, out of conference slate, injuries plagued this team. But then at the end, you said four out of six of your last games were wins, again, with a primarily young team. So what was the biggest difference you saw from that first two-thirds of the season to those last six games where you guys were really able to click and put it all together? Well, I think the fact that they got so much time. I mean, we started the season off with three uh, pleads in the starting lineup and two uh, yearlings, two sophomores. So, I mean, that's a pretty young team. Uh, we, we didn't, you know, we graduated some, some impactful players, uh, you know, and, and, and at the end of the day, you know, for, for us, we, we just, you know, we had so many different things going on, uh, you know, with these young kids in the development. And, you know, you lose a kid like Jess Lewis and Matty Hovren, who, who was such a, a huge production player for us. Uh, there were a lot of holes to fill, but uh, just thrilled, even though we had those tough, those tough injuries too, it just seemed like, everybody kept stepping up, you know, whether it was a Natalie Straukas or a Liz Lane or kids that hadn't played early in the season and, and took advantage of, of being opportunistic when their chance came. Well, you've been, you've been around the Patriot League for a long time now. You've seen teams rise and fall. Patriot League women's basketball did not get a play through their semifinals and their championship game. Who did you see kind of stepping up in those two rounds that you think could have gone on and, and made some noise and won the league? Oh, I think hands down, Bucknell was the team to beat. They uh, they just were just so balanced and they had so much experience. Uh, and they had one of the greatest players, you know, that I've seen in this league in a long time. Uh, I, I just think that when you look at um, just how balanced they were offensively, their, their defense was, was terrific. I mean, every time we played them, probably our first game here in early January when we opened with them, was probably the, the, the best we played against them because as the year went on, although we, you know, we struggled and but we got better at the end, we were playing our best basketball. Now, we, we were missing, when you think about it, we we're missing three of our best players uh, in Sabria Hunter, Lindsey Skamen, 
and, and Cameron Hall. So, you know, the three starters were out by the time we got to the end of the season. But we still were able to, to you know, to, to win four out of our last six. So it, that's all positive stuff for, for, for next year. But the league will still be good. And, uh, you know, once Bucknell, Holy Cross graduates a lot. Lehigh graduates uh, quite a few good players. You know, I think, Zach, the one thing is interesting, when you look at the three all-conference teams, the first, second, and third, all, all conference postseason teams. I believe twelve of the sixteen players on those teams were, were seniors. Well, a lot coming back for the Black Knights and, and your squad. And you've been around the league a lot. And you've seen a lot of teams, but Army over your time here has had so many good memories. Two championships as a head coach for you. One with Maggie Dixon as well. What are some moments that stick out in your career at West Point that really kind of you look back, I was like, wow, that was, that was one or two of my, my greatest moments here at West Point. Well, you know, I would – Joy, there's a lot of them. I mean, we – you know, when, when you look at a program at this mid-major level, especially here at the academy, um, you, you just want to – you look at uh, what we were able to do uh, from, say, 2013 through 2018. I mean, we averaged close to 24 wins a year. Uh, won, you know, numerous championships, four postseason, uh, you know, national postseason appearances between the NCA and the women's NIT. So th that, that, that time was really, really special. But, you know, you go back to, to my first year here as an associate coach with Maggie Dixon. You know, right before we got on, uh, we started this interview, I, uh, an article uh, popped up today in the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette newspaper uh, about Maggie. Uh, I was interviewed by a I got a great sports writer from there, Joe Starkey, and uh, he, he just did a little bit of a, you know, go back because Maggie's anniversary of her passing was this past Monday on April the 6th. And, you know, she's buried here at the Academy and uh, it's a great article. He, he, he was able to reach out and talk to a lot of the former players. So of all the things, you know, I'd like to say that the 16 team was obviously special. I mean, I've been coaching for over 40 years and, to be honest with you, that team was just unbelievable. You know, we're 20, 29 and two going into the NCAA tournament. You know, you know how disappointed I was about our seed. So that there's no reason to bring that up again. You'll get my, you'll get me going on that one. But uh, you know, have to play Syracuse, who ultimately went to the national championship game on the road, was was really difficult. But that team was just so special, and you know what, what an unbelievable senior class. But you know, the, the, the 2016 will, will always be, you know, near and dear to my heart. But um, those kids are, were really, you know, unbelievable. And Maggie Dixon was, was was such a young, you know, just a dynamo. Would have been a, just a rise. It was a rising star in, in, the, in the business. Well, Coach, thanks for giving us a couple of minutes. Hope you and your family are safe. And we look forward to seeing you back at West Point real soon. Zach, it was great seeing you. Stay healthy, stay safe, and, and let's get back to normal.